V14 is going wide. I've had some mixed reviews. Tesla's shown some tremendous strength after earnings last week. Is it fair to call earnings mid? Meh. <laughs> Meh. All right. That's fine too. Yeah. Quite a bit to get into here, but I think maybe we should start off with a... I want to speculate why Tesla is rallying. I think Tesla is rallying because Tesla nerds and Tesla bulls are getting their hands on version 14 and they're seeing how good it is, Matt. I posted a mildly controversial post about my experiences with V14, which were underwhelming, I think was the word that I used, which I think was fair. It definitely did some stuff well, and there was just some stuff that was not very great given how much it was hyped up, I think, from a lot of people. I was a little bit disappointed, not majorly. And I think they're going to sort through all these comfort issues, but it was just not as there as I was expecting it to be. I saw a lot of people in the replies basically saying, yeah, that was very similar to my experience. And certainly I saw a few others that had universally positive experiences. There could be some people buying Tesla shares on the back of a really good V14 experience. But based on the anecdotal evidence I was seeing from a lot of affirmation of similar experiences to what I'd seen, I'm not buying it. I think we can agree V14 is a bit timid. Yeah, it's very safe, but it's overly timid. It's seeing ghosts. It's it's staying away from danger, all these things. Like even in a totally empty four-way stop, once it makes the full stop, sometimes it's deciding, do we go or not go? I think the most critical thing is safety. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you don't want like heartbreaking for randoms or casual people in a robo taxi. You don't want heartbreaking because that can be jarring. But it's okay if you're a little impatient with the taxi driver. Don't you think, Matt? Yeah, I, I do think so. I had another experience. This was after I posted the big post earlier today. I was just running a quick errand less than a mile away from my house. And it handled this situation extremely well. There was a huge line of traffic. It was getting into the left turn lane because all the traffic was backed up and I was turning into this parking lot right at the corner. And then it's like slammed on the brakes. I'm like, oh gosh, what's this? And I see some crazy person is doing the thing where they cut in front of all the parked traffic to try to turn left. So the car had to literally slam on the brakes, although I didn't see this person there. So that was a pretty wild experience, but it handled it flawlessly, I would say. And it saw the situation sooner than I did and legitimately could have caused an accident. So is it safe? A hundred percent. Is it seeing things that I'm not? Yes. Is it still doing things that are super annoying? Also, yes. And just to give you an idea in getting back to your point about, is this ready for the normies to take on a robo taxi? So leaving that same parking lot, it just took the most bizarre way. I wanted to turn left and then turn left again during rush hour traffic. And the left turn lane that I needed to turn into in order to turn left again was just way backed up. So it was very clear there was no chance to just turn left. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and let it wait for, I don't know, very close to a minute. And then I was like, this is just not going to clear up. A much more natural thing would have been just to turn right and then turn right again and get home that way. And so it didn't do that. It didn't reroute. My point in saying it's not doing anything unsafe. And in fact, it seems extremely safe. Mm -hmm. That's been one of the most impressive things. But at the same time, it's making decisions that I think would alienate people if they're expecting a robo-taxi competitor or something like that at this stage of the game. That's a very long-winded answer, but I think my takeaway is it needs some more polishing. I'm confident they'll get there. They need to fix routing so you don't take a dumb way home and unnecessarily just get stuck by traffic. It needs to recognize a situation where if your traffic is really backed up, you need to be more aggressive. The last thing I've seen a lot of people comment is just like how much it speeds. <laughs> like it's pretty aggressive, even on standard mode. Let me pause my rant there. And I'm curious how that hits you. So I want to approach it from a different way. I think it's much improved in all the ways that matter. I think it, it handles various negotiations even better than it did before. I think it's smoother in many different ways in roundabouts. It's very smooth going into and choosing the angle and the speed and the roundabout. And there's these uh, dumbbell roundabouts where version 13 used to fling me from side to side and go a little too fast <laughs> through those. And now it's just right. Like it's perfect for me. I'm confident that given Elon's comments on the earnings call, they're well aware that it's overly cautious now. The first priority when we release a, a major new software architecture for autopilot is safety. So, so it, it starts off with safety, it obviously safety prioritized, and then we saw comfort thereafter. Most people should wait till port 14.2 for, before they actually download uh, version 14. Um, because by 14.2, we'll address many of the comfort issues. 
um, the priority is, is very much safety first and then thereafter the, the comfort issues. That's why most people are like, yeah, probably it'll be a little like, it'll be safe, but jerky. And I think they're going to make those tweaks and we already started to see a reduction in the brake fluttering or stuttering. So that's a good sign that by 14.2, that it'll improve. Another thing from the earnings call is that we still don't have the 10 X parameter count of the much larger model. And this was confirmed by Charles Key, who came to Tesla from Waymo. He was talking about how a lot of these benefits are because of the longer context window. And when we were first starting to see the first day or two of version 14, he was saying, there's more for you all to see than we did. I've seen it do a lot of good things, but yeah, there's been some frustrating things. What's your confidence here that they figure this out before year end rather than next summer or something like that, Matt? I think it's pretty high. I'd expect some serious improvements in the next month or so. I'm pretty confident they're going to get that part sorted. The other thing I was going to say where I think it still needs some improvement is parking. With a lot of the videos that I'd seen, it looked like this was a major step up. And I think it is a major step up. But still, several times when I've taken it to a destination, it just parks like a drunkard or something. Like today yeah. when I was pulling into the parking lot, there were two spots and it was kind of like, oh, which spot do I take? And it chose the middle. It was parked directly on the line, like the tire was over the line a bit. Stuff like that needs a bit of improvement. Also the angles as it's reversing and needing to pull forward. It's doing a five-point turn when a three-point turn should suffice and that sort of thing. Yeah. Some of that stuff needs to be optimized, but that's all comfort, not safety. And that's the single most important metric by far. A lot of this other stuff is nitpicking that they need to fix so that adoption increases, but it's not the sort of thing that has me worried. Do you think we're going to see Tesla in five more cities with RoboTaxi by your end? Yes. Safety monitor in Austin, in or out? Gone. Matt's on Elon time. Elon said, at least three months ago, Elon said that you and I would be able to do unsupervised FSD by the end of the year. But that was always too optimistic. I'm excited. In Austin, when they're doing new areas, they probably will have safety monitors. If they're working on the airport pick up and drop off in the rideshare lot. They'll have the safety monitors for that, not for safety, but more for monitoring mm -hmm. that situation. I'm guessing they're working on that already. We have seen Teslas with either safety monitors or the LIDARs in different areas of Austin, like B Cave and other areas that they're not in presently. So I think there's potential that they could come out, but they may not be out completely in Austin. I'm wondering how they're going to negotiate that if they're not all in on a city. You know, maybe they just keep a geofence for now and have a way to test with safety monitors in neighborhoods that they're building up. You also want to test pick up and drop off around hotels and yeah. sporting events, things like that. So do you think they're going to have some sort of robo-taxi availability for the shareholder meeting next week? You mean cyber cab without a safety monitor robo taxi i'm thinking cyber cab i'll give credit for anything other than just the pure thing if there's some hey are you headed to the shareholder meeting and if so we'll drop you off at the door by clicking this button or something like that i think the pick up and drop off piece is one of the things that needs some improvement yeah i would hope that with robo taxi and the shareholder meeting especially if it's unsupervised or if they have cyber cabs, I'd be a little disappointed if it's only on Giga Texas property where they have the cyber cab. I'd understand it for the cyber cab, but you know, robo taxi. So I, I'm lucky I got to experience cyber cab at We Robot, but there's a lot of people going to the shareholder meeting that didn't get to experience it yet. Worst case, I hope they offer that even if it's just on private roads. Yeah. And I'm curious what they show as far as Optimus, but my sense is that they're not going to show the new Optimus, or if they do, maybe he'll have the gloves or whatever on. Yeah. You can't see what the hand is. I think there'll be some things that are covered up.